Policing is not an easy profession for anyone, and it's hard on people. It's also very rewarding, but it's also hard on families as well. And the sacrifices that they've made over the years that have brought myself and brought us here, I just wanted to publicly start off by saying thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to publicly thank all these community leaders who are standing around me right now. We just had a very good conversation. I think it was a start. They listened to me. And that is exactly what I'm going to do starting off here at Richmond. I know we have challenges here, but the number one thing I have to do, as the mayor said, is listen. Because the number one thing that I want to find out is before we make any type of change is what's in the ground. I have great ideas. I think my ideas are great. And I share them with people, bounce them off people, tweak them, and I think they work. However, we have to listen to these people around me right now to make sure that that is what they want. Police departments look different across the country. This is a conversation, but they do. And in this country, we like our individuality. So police departments in Richmond look different than the police departments in Charlotte, police departments in DC, New York, Chicago. And that's because we like our individuality. And that individuality does not come from the person necessarily at the top, it comes from the community. So we're looking at the community being deeply involved in this police department. We're looking to be actually involved in the community. I think this is where we need to start. There are a lot of things that I've talked to the mayor, we've had some very long conversations about the history of policing and what brought us here, all right? And I think one of the things that brought us here was not to go through the entire history, but the Great Recession kind of hijacked community policing. A lot of resources, a lot of personnel were diverted elsewhere. Now, I don't think we ever got back to it. And maybe these people here, maybe they don't want community policing, but that's the question I will ask. That's the question I'm going to listen to. Whatever they want, whatever they want that's what we're going to do. We're going to work together to make a good department great. And that's not to say that this department has deficiencies or errors. It could be a, just a simple thing as just complacency. We could never get too comfortable. We have to always seek improvement. And I think that's where the Richmond Police Department is right now. I could go on and talk forever, because if you put a microphone on me, I can talk. <laughs> but I, 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 I am just got this strange suspicion that somebody has some questions for me out there. So, so guys, we have a big crowd here today, so we're going to try and give everybody a chance to ask questions. So uh, we'll start off AJ. Definitely. So uh, why Richmond? I've been to Richmond helping out with assessment centers for, I'm thinking about 11 years, it could be 12, somewhere around there. And I've always been impressed with this police department and what it does and how it does things. And um, when you look around the country at police departments and looking around the country at city, yeah, you cannot help but look at Richmond and say that is a great opportunity. That's a great city, that's a great department. I, I think it would be foolish if I did not look at the opportunity, and then once the opportunity continued to go, if I did not grab it and come here and without haste. I, um, and when I mean without haste, I mean, once he said, would you like to jump? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly the way it was, and I'm here today. Matthew. First thing, like I said, I'm going to listen. And what you're just telling me, that's what I want to hear from the community. I want to hear not only that they want those relationships, but what kind of relationships. Do they want a walking beat in their neighborhood? Do they want a community resource officer? Do they want um, uh, a, a monthly or a quarterly meeting where they sit down with the command staff of their entire division or their sector that, that oversees the policing in that area? That's the questions, and those are the things I'm going to listen to. Kirk? Or Nick, either. <laughs> so obviously we've had a lot of unrest recently throughout Richmond for the last couple of nights. Um, what do you think needs to be done differently here? Uh, that's a good question, and I've got to take a close look at that. Um, uh, what I know is what I've heard from just a few people and um, just very brief conversations and what I've seen on the media, in the media. So that is a good question, and I need to find an answer to that. 
and I'm, that's a question I'm going to ask. So if I just from my far lens of what I've seen on the media from Charlotte saying they need to do this, 99% of the time I would be wrong. So I do know I need to get up close and personal for what's happening, and then I can understand it. But one thing I said earlier, what's in the ground? We need to understand what's going on. So to give you an answer of what needs to be done, uh, that would be premature on my part to even say what it is without taking a close, close look at it. Jeremy. So uh, I've got a couple questions, but first, uh, in terms of uh, Charlotte, are you done with unrest there? You've got 25 nights, and if so, have you used tear gas and pepper spray and stuff? Or oh, well, let's not, let's not dance around it. Yeah, we use tear gas and pepper spray. Are and you still going on? Yeah, those protests are still going on, and what I mean, what I'm not going to dance around is that, yeah, we've made national news about the use of our tear gas and our, our weapons munitions, and from my position, I cannot really go into details about that. I can tell you that uh, Chief Putney and incoming Chief Jennings are deeply, deeply rooted into the decision of what happens with that, with the investigations going on, and to be completely fair to the city of Charlotte, to the officers involved, I really cannot go into the details about that. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, yes. So do you, is one of the issues that's come up is the question of youth. There are two members of city council, including one here today, mm -hmm. who have proposed staying such, uh, such items. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Two, the two council When used properly, they're used properly, okay? But we need to make sure that the decision point on the use of those munitions is at such a high level and on the ground level. That's what I think right now, and I'm looking at it so that when they're used, the articulation and the exp explanation is clear and concise and that that would not be in question as to why they use them. But if they, the munitions, if they use properly, can help save other people, can help prevent property from being damaged, prevent officers and others to be in hell. But there's a lot of steps that you go through before that. And those are the things that we're going to look at. So to tell you, should they not be used? No, they should be used properly. Okay? And that's clear. And anyone making a decision should be held responsible for the use of those munitions. Okay? So I know a lot of officers are listening to me right now, but I think they would agree that on the ground, I think they want to see uh, someone in command someone of authority to actually stand by them and say what you're doing is right just as they want to see the public stand behind them just as they want to see that um, smile from just a citizen during these hard times or a pat on the back I know it's COVID okay <laughs> but it goes a long way when an officer says or an officer hears we appreciate you. Serena. So I wasn't able to move any drop of a hat. Um, that's why I started off this conversation and thanking my family and the sacrifices <laughs> that they've got to make. Um, uh, my wife is going to have to run that household and shut down things at Charlotte a lot by herself. So, um, yeah, it's not going to be an easy task. And, you know, you brought it up. Thank you. And I just thank you once again. Thank you, baby. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. can't answer the question. If another mayor comes in, that's a question for the other mayor. But right now, I think that my boss, this mayor here, mm -hmm. is a good man and he means well. And that um, I think the citizens will see that, but I cannot say who they, who they should vote for. But I can tell you from where I stand, if I did not believe in what he was saying and what he wants and the path that he was going on, I would still be in Charlotte. Okay, Jeremy, Jeremy, you used up your quote. <laughs> Sabrina and then Whitney. Okay, let's be specific. A use of force allegation meaning excessive force? Excessive force. Uh, not to my knowledge that I have not. No, I have not. Yeah. Whitney? Yeah, I'm interested in a little bit more of this, uh, by all accounts, expedited hiring process. It's only been 11 short days. Um, 
um, between the time the city lost its previous chief to you standing here. Um, how did you find out about this job? Uh, when and did they approach you or did you uh, seek the job out? The job has always been on the radar once we saw that the previous chief um, was leaving, resigned. Um, it was on the radar and so uh, there were a lot of phone calls around uh, that I made and that were made to me about it. And, but to get to the crust of the first question is how long did this process take on and whatever. Uh, you would have to ask the mayor how long he put into this. Yeah, I, and from my understanding, uh, he put some work into this and, and you don't choose a police chief without looking around. And um, I am just honored that he has chosen me to be here right now. So this process, I mean, I can't tell you. I, I know that when I got into the process, I put everything I had into getting this job. And I thank the mayor for actually putting his faith in me. So they I, sought you out? I, I, I received phone calls. I gave made phone calls. There were a lot of phone calls. But when you see things on the radar, and, and, and this is something that uh, police executives do all the time. When you see a police executive or something there's a problem there, um, they, they have an interest. Uh, you know, Atlanta right now is without a police chief. And I know some of my counterparts back in North Carolina are very interested in that, and they've sought out those processes as well. All around the country, if I'm, uh, you mentioned earlier about my um, associations with some of the professional uh, police organizations, those organizations hear about these openings and they send out these emails left and right. And so we get a whole list of these things. And uh, a lot of my friends have taken police jobs in areas um, uh, out west because that's where they wanted to relocate. That's where their family wanted to be. So, you know, there, there are many ways for police executives to find out exactly about openings and jobs. Last question, AJ. Okay, I'll, I'll make it quick. Uh, it's, it's a two-parter. There's a lot of people here. A lot of the community residents of Richmond would love to be here. Obviously, they can't right now. A lot of them are very anxious. What is your message directly to them? What is your message to speak to them with today since they can't be here? And then the other part of my question is, what is the metric by which you will measure your success? In other words, there's a, there was a lot of issues that Richmond was trying to tackle even before the current issues that we're having now. What is the metric by which you will measure your success, let's say, a year from now and beyond? Uh, to all the community who couldn't be here, uh, the message would be consistent with what I'm gonna say, and that is I'm here, thank you for letting me be here, and that I'm listening. All right, and we want to make this department better. We want to make this department better than what it was. So I am listening right now, and that means that my office, my phone lines, my email, it's open to you. Let's have a conversation once we get those set up. And the other part of your question was, oh, oh the, met, the matrix, uh, the metrics of how we would do that. There are a lot of ways to do that. Um, uh, we could look at uh, crime stats and the part one crimes in which uh, was used in the ComStat format. You know, a lot of times we looked at those matrix and we said, okay, we're doing well if our crime was down. Yeah, but that kind of led to where we are today. Numbers were down, but how many relationships did we foster that, that month, that quarter? How many times did we have conversations with people uh, in the communities? How many times were we, the community, able to allow to come in and talk to us about what was going on? And those type of things are really hard to measure. Officer morale is really not a tool to say how well the officers are doing or how they feel right now. Um, and that's one thing you have to look at too because it's very hard to be an officer today. And I know this and I understand this, but I understand that officers have good hearts and that they mean the best for themselves, for their family, and for the community that they serve. So how do we measure the morale? I don't know. I would love to measure it in the number of times that people thanked an officer in a day. Uh, that would be a wonderful way because that, that is the one thing that I've seen throughout my career that will boost an officer's spirit in the day. Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate you coming. The chief will be here officially on Wednesday, July 1st. Dean Lepley with uh, the police department is here. He can also assist you. And, uh, and I, we have a number of members of our community who I'm sure would be happy to uh, talk with you as well, as well as our council people. Thanks very much. Okay.